Hello friends, welcome to AQYS YouTube channel. This session is a part of our quick revision series prelims Atulya. In today's session, we'll talk about election system in India. In our last sessions related to Indian polity, we have already covered fundamental rights. We have covered fundamental duties and DPSPs and we covered uh, other significant terms related to Indian polity. So if you haven't watched those videos, you can explore the playlist of Prelims Atulya. Now let's talk about election system in our country. And before we discuss that, let me tell you why we need elections. What is the importance of elections? See, when we talk about the democracy, the first thing that invariably comes to our mind is elections. Elections are very, very important in a democracy. So we cannot imagine a democracy without elections. Because through elections, we express our choice. We choose our representatives. And these representatives govern us. They frame the laws on our behalf. So in our country, we have indirect democracy. It means we do not participate directly. Rather, we choose these representatives which frame the laws on our behalf. Now you must know that democracy, there are two types. First, direct democracy and second, indirect democracy. Now, direct democracy means that citizens, they are directly participating in the lawmaking process. And indirect democracy means that you are choosing representatives on your behalf okay and these representatives frame the laws on the behalf of the people so in our country we have indirect democracy so there are so many ways to choose these representatives but but the most prominent ways are two there are two ways and these two ways are used by so many countries but in our country, we use FPTP. It means first past the post system. FPTP. So under FPTP, a candidate which secures the highest number of votes, that person is declared elected. It means you do not need to cross the majority mark. You merely need to secure the votes more than other candidates and if you have done it you will be declared victorious okay so it is a very simple concept that there is no majority mark in fptp system just you need to secure more number of votes that's it but under pr system you do not vote in the favor of a representative rather you vote in the favor of a party okay so if a party secures a particular vote share suppose this party has secured some amount of vote share maybe it is 50 percent then this party is allotted the seats on the basis of this vote share let me repeat one more time that under PR system, number of seats are allotted on the basis of vote share. Okay, so the proportion of vote share is similar to number of votes. So number of votes are decided by the vote share of the party. But under FP, FPTP system, vote share is relatively lesser. It is very, very less than the number of votes. Let me give you the example. In 1984, Congress secured 415 seats out of 543. So here, the number of seats, it was 80%. But the vote share, it was 48%. Okay, so here you can see that vote share is less than the number of votes. Okay, so this is what the FPTP is. Number of seats are greater than the vote share. 
Now let's try to understand why we choose FPTP system over PR system. See this FPTP system it is very easy to understand. It is a very simple concept that a candidate needs to secure more votes than other candidates and that person will be declared elected. So common citizens who do not have adequate amount of knowledge when it comes to politics, when it comes to elections, they can also understand this concept. So it's not a rocket science. So that's why India decided to adopt this FPTP system. Second, under FPTP system, generally we have stable government. Why? Because under FPTP system, number of votes are greater than vote share but it does not happen under PR system. Why? Because number of votes, number of seats, these are decided by the vote share. And the proportion of vote share is similar to number of seats. So we might not have the stable government. So this is the reason why we went for FPTP system. Why? Because we will have a stable government under FPTP system. Now let's talk about the Election Commission of India. Now this Election Commission of India, it was provided by Article 324. Now this article is very very important and there might be a potential question in the prelims. So Article 324, it provides for the establishment of Election Commission of India. Now. Let me tell you that several efforts have been made in order to ensure free and fair elections. And one of the most important efforts was to constitute this election commission of India. And from the prelims perspective, this election commission of India is very, very important. And you must know some facts. First fact is that this election commission of India it can be a single member body and it can be a multi member body. Right now it is a multi member body but you must know that till 1989 till 1989 it was a single member body. So right now we have chief election commissioner okay, and two election commissioners and these chief election commissioner and election commissioners, these are appointed by the President of India in consultation with Council of Ministers. So this fact is also very very important that these are appointed by the President. Now you must know that in every state we have Chief Electoral Officer and this election commission is assisted by, assisted by these Chief Electoral Officers. Okay, now let's talk about the recognition of political parties. See, the political parties are recognized by the Election Commission of India. And there, there are some requirements these political parties are supposed to be fulfilling so that they can receive this status of political party. I have provided the conditions which they are supposed to satisfy in order to get this status so these four conditions five conditions in fact you can go through these conditions there might be a question in prelims now let's talk about the national people's party so this party received the status of national party recently it was in current affairs and it becomes important for your prelims so it was the eighth party to receive the status of national party and first party from North East. So it satisfied the condition that it became the state party in four states. Okay. So since it became it became the state party in four states, it satisfied one of the criteria and it became the national party. Okay. So just remember about National People's Party. Now let's talk about the EVM machine. See, this EVM machine was used in 1982 for the very first time. And it was used in Paravur Assembly. This is the constituency in Kerala. 
So this is an important fact that it was used in Kerala for the very first time. After that EVM machines were used uh, in several states on an uh, experimental basis. But now it has become a common pra practice. These are being used everywhere. And since 2002 perhaps, these are being used in our country at large scale. Now we see in the newspaper that when political parties, when they lose the elections, they explicitly, they directly blame the EVM machines. So EVM machines remain in the news and this concept, this topic becomes important for your prelims. Now you must know that EVM machines, these were designed by the election commission in collaboration with Bharat Electronics and Electronic Corporation of India. Remember the names of these two PSUs, Bharat Electronics and Electronic Corporation of India. Now let's talk about the nota. This nota, this concept was prescribed by the Supreme Court in 2013. So under this concept, you have the right to reject a candidate. It means if you are not satisfied with candidates, you do not need to vote in their favor. You can outrightly reject them. So right to reject. So it was used for the very first time in 2013 in these assembly elections Chhattisgarh, Mizoram, Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh. Now let's talk about right to recall. Right to recall means that if you are not happy with the performance of your representative, suppose you chose a representative and that person made so many promises but this representative could not fulfill those promises and you are not happy with his performance. So you have the right to de-elect this representative. It means you have the right to recall. Now this right to recall you can exercise it when you are not happy with the performance of your representative. So all these facts I wanted to discuss regarding this uh, topic. And all these facts are very very important you can download these notes we have prepared these notes keep in in mind the requirement for your prelims and if you have liked our initiative you can subscribe our youtube channel for more such videos and you can follow our social media platforms for daily current affairs content so that's all for today's session i'll see you in the next session Bye -bye.